Welcome back. Riffin recently reported that cancellation of home purchases had increased to the highest level in nearly over a year. For the Seattle real estate market, the cancellation rate has increased to about 10.5%, which means for every 10 sellers that had accepted an offer, one of them is going back on the market. And this month's the Seattle real estate five minute update. I'll be sharing with you why this is happening as well as some early indicators on where the market is headed. So let's go. Hi, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is TC Wu. My bio includes being a real estate broker and investor for 20 plus years. I'm a state licensed real estate instructor, developer, and a partner at a real estate brokerage and property management company in Seattle. Now, the first reason that's causing the buyers to pull back is that there are simply more choices available. Take a look at this. We currently only have 1.7 months of inventory available, but it's been trending upwards since the beginning of this year. Since the balance market is between four to six months, we're technically still in a seller's market. But buyers today are much more selective and cautious compared to before. Second reason is that most experts are projecting that the mortgage rates will come down as inflation is now more or less under control. And a lot of buyers who are not in a rush have simply decided to take a step back and wait for conditions to improve. In other words, the fear of missing out, aka FOMO, is no longer the motivating factor driving a lot of buyers to throw everything they have at a property. Finally, some pending sales are falling apart because the buyers are no longer able to obtain financing to close on the purchase. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I highly recommend today's buyers to make sure they have a financing contingency in their offer for this reason. This way, their earnest money is protected if the loan falls through, and it can be from a variety of reasons, such as loss in appointment, or in some cases, the interest rates simply rise too quickly and the loan becomes unaffordable. Now let's talk about the housing prices. The housing price in the greatest seller area had officially reached its peak back in May of 2022, when an average house in King County cost a million dollars. Since then, prices have come down by about 20%. However, since the start of this year, home prices have been climbing back up by now about 10%. So we're currently sitting at $911,000 for a medium price home in King County, which is still about 10% down from its peak. The number one saving grace from a real estate crash is low inventory. That's partly due to lenders having imposed much stricter lending guidelines since the housing crash of 2008. Also, despite some layoff announcements, Seattle's unemployment rate is relatively low, currently sitting at 3.4% versus a national average of 3.8%. Therefore, we're not seeing foreclosures or short sales flooding the market right now. To put things in perspective, take a look at this. What you see here is the new inventory level for every single month over the past three years. New housing inventory typically peaks around June and July, and by September, October, we typically see a drastic drop as more sellers stay put during the winter months. Without fail, new inventory always has bottom in December because of the holidays. Hence, every year, you can see a distinct pattern of the inventory cycle, peaking the summertime, then dip down in December. However, for 2023, something very unusual happened. Our new inventory in the summer months never even come close to the same time the previous years. For example, over the past three years, we have been getting about 3,000 to 3,800 homes for sale on a monthly basis in the summer. This year, there have been only been 2,000 to 27 homes entering the market for sale each month. In other words, for 2023, we have about 30% less new inventory compared to historical levels. Finally, we have to talk about the latest on the rise in mortgage rates and the implications. The average interest rate for 30-year fixed mortgage has just surpassed 7% per mortgage news daily. However, in the news, everyone is talking about the impact the higher rates have on home buyers. I think it's also very important to pay attention to how the builders are impacted because builder activities is one of the most important early indicators for real estate prices in the future. Many people don't know about this. Construction loans are typically adjustable rate mortgages, and currently, interest rates on construction loans are pushing 10%. Coupled with high labor and material costs, a lot of builders are pulling back from starting new projects. And this trend would directly affect 
the amount of housing supply we have in the pipeline over the next one to two years. And it's something we'll pay close attention to on this channel. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you find the information helpful. Please contact me with any real estate questions. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't. We do publish weekly one minute updates as well. I wish you well, I wish your family well, and I look forward to seeing you next time.